Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to derive the coefficients of the stiffness matrix for a beam element. Um, if you want to know about the bar truss element, please watch my first video. And yeah, let's get into it. Here we go, we have the beam element, and this is just a, a picture of what a beam element looks like, and well, another one where a beam is deformed. Um, this is the main element we will want to analyze, which has, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a vertical force acting at each node, we call it if one y F2y and also um, a moment acting at each node and I've just also added the um, displacement v1, v2, phi1, phi2 which is the displacements on the beam. Okay, so next we want to assume a displacement function. Um, this is something you just have to know. It is just the basic third degree polynomial and as I've written this function is appropriate because it provides four degrees of freedom two at each node as I've shown in the previous picture and also the derivative of the displacement function of x equals phi with phi as the rotation in newton meters per radians and v is the displacement in meter okay so yeah, that should make sense if it doesn't just stay tuned and I'll try and explain my best, in my best way for you. Okay, yeah, so there you have the function. This is the basic function that you use for displacement. And we're going to work with this function to derive the coefficients. So first, we, first thing we want to do is apply the boundary conditions. As you can see, I just redrew the element here. We take x from the left, positive to the right direct or to the right. And also that's the L is the length of the beam and that's node one node two. And if we say V zero or displacement at zero will be there, and that will be equal to the vertical displacement of node one, that will be equal to A4. That should be pretty straightforward. And next we're gonna look at node one again, and that is the derivative of the displacement over x which is the slope at 1 and that is going to be equal to a3 next things get a little bit more interesting and we apply the vertical displacement at node 2 which is at x equals l and as you can guess it's e equal to the vertical displacement at node 2 which is there and you just apply or insert the value l into the equation and as you can see already um, sub a4 equals v1 and a3 equals phi1 and we call that our first equation next we take again the derivative of the displacement function we give, which gives us the slope at node 2 and this is going to again just going to again <coughs> sorry for that and this is going to give us another equation and as you can see, we still have coefficients a1 and a2 in both of these. And we have two equations, two unknowns, which we can solve for. And I'm not going to show how to solve it, but please believe me when I um, move on to the next slide. As you can see, solving 1 and 2, I get a1 equals that, a1 equals that, or a2 equals that. Um, you can do this by as an exercise for yourself to just check that my mathematics was correct. And yeah, should be good for you. And what we do next, we just add A1, A2, A3 and A4 back into the original displacement equation, which gives us this big equation. Now, don't be afraid of this, it's just a long equation, not that difficult. So as you can see, that is A1, which is listed there x to the 3, and that's a2, x to the 2, phi 1, x plus v1. Okay. Now, before we continue, I must say something about sign, sign conventions. 
in general beam theory it is taken as positive when at the first end um, moment is clockwise and the second one second or the um, end moment is anti-clockwise and the shear force or the vertical force of the third one is upwards and downwards. Now in the stiffness theory, theory or stiffness method the positive convention is a bit different. Um, positive is taken for shear force that is act, acting upward is positive as you can see and the moment acting in the anti-clockwise direction is taken as positive. Please take note of this because this will determine the signs that we use during our derivation. Next we want to apply beam theory. Um, we should note that the moment equation is equal to the second derivative of the displacement equation times the Young's modulus times the inertia of the member and the shear force equation is equal to the third derivative of the displacement equation times the Young's modulus times the inertia. Okay, yes, so let's first look at F1y. That's going to be equal to um, the shear force at uh, x equals 0. I'm just going to go back quickly. So F1y in the stiffness method is equal to v0. That is x equals 0 at that position. And that gives you ei times third derivative of the displacement at 0. And that is equal to this. And next, we are going to look at the moment at point 1, which is going to be equal to the minus or the negative of the moment at x equals 0. Due to this sign convention, let me just show you that. This moment is in the opposite direction of that moment, and that is where the negative sign comes from. And that is equal to the negative of ei the second derivative of the displacement and that gives you this equation. I apologize that Q there must be a subscript. I forgot to make it a subscript so yeah this it's not a um, it's not a new variable. So yeah. Now we have the um, force in the moment at node one. Now we're moving to the force at node two which is the negative of the shear force at x equals L. I'm gonna show you those two are in opposite directions, um, which says this f must be negative, that f. And for the next equation, just note that the moments are in the same direction, which makes them makes them positive. Yeah. And if you just multiply that, the third derivative of the displacements at L gives you that equation. And the moment is the second derivative of the displacement equation at L, and it gives you that equation. Again, I apologize for that. 2 at the phi it must be phi 2, and also V. I can't stress that enough. It's not multiplied by 2, it should be phi 2. So please don't get confused. Okay, so move on. So moving on, um, we want to apply these equations or implement these equations in matrix form. So we're going to take that f1y m, m1, f2y m2 and those and these and put them in a matrix form. As you can see all of them have ei over l to the power of 3 in front of them. We can take that out of the matrix and as you can see the um, displacements are all in the same order for every equation v1 phi 1 v2 phi 2 v1 phi 1 v2 phi 2 v1 phi 1 v1 phi 2 v1 phi 1 v2 phi 2 and we can just apply that into a matrix form as you can see there is the stiffness matrix or the stiffness method beam with the positive sign convention and that there is the stiffness matrix or the stiffness equation for a beam element with f1, y, m1, f2, y, m2 and you can see the ei over l to 3 and the rest of the equations with the displacement vector at the end. So just to clarify there is the stiffness matrix for a beam element ei over l to 3 and 
the coefficients that were derived in the previous equations. And just lastly, just to show you, as in my previous video, that column refers to 1y, fourth 1y, that column refers to the moment at node 1. Um, that column is the force 2y, which refers to f2y. That column is, refers to m2, which is that moment at node 2. And also note, this matrix is symmetrical, and that's always a good check to see if your derivation or method that you're using or implementing is correct. Thank you very much for watching. Please um, look at my third video for the frame element derivation. Thank you. Sorry to avoid any confusion. I've just re-edited that um, slide with the wrong subscript. Um, as you can see, this is what the equation should be. Um, yeah. Please take a look at it and make sure you didn't um, accidentally write down the wrong one. Thank you.